What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny for real. Um, does it like I'm sweating? I might be sweating, bro. These lights, you see these lights? These lights get real hot. And it's hot. You know what I'm saying? So I might be sweating recording this video, but it is what it is. If you're new around here, subscribe. This is a channel where I sit down and talk about things in my mind, and it's usually basketball related. 100% of the time, it is basketball related. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, leave a like. Today's episode is going to be more of a dialogue. I mean, it's always a dialogue. I may have the camera and the microphone, uh, but I'm always in the comment section. So I would love to hear your opinion on these topics because I don't know if I'm in the majority or the minority when it comes to these topics. And today's topic is those daytime sports talk shows. And maybe sometimes it's not daytime, but you get what I'm saying. The shows that have talking heads, talking about basketball, baseball, football, whatever it may be. Um, I want to preface this by saying this is not a shot at a specific network, a specific show, or specific people. Because when it comes down to these people, sometimes they are just actors. They're doing what they have to do to pay the bills, whatever. And other times, like, these guys have grinded their entire lives to get in the spot that they are in. We're talking 20, 30 plus years to ever even get on a panel where they are on, or they are on TV. And at the end of the day, that has been my dream for as long as I can remember. For as long as I can remember. So I'm not knocking the people because I know they put in the necessary time to get to the point where they have their own show. And having a show, especially if it's daily, is hard to be entertaining every single day. It just is, especially to that magnitude. So when I was younger, it was my dream to be on TV. And even to this day, I'm 24 years old. It is still kind of my dream to be on TV talking about basketball and having people listen. Even though now things are, things are maybe changing, man, and when I get to 30 years old, maybe it's completely different where nobody cares about being on TV because I think TV is a dying media, right? Dying form of media. And maybe people just want to have YouTube channels where people listen. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. But at this moment in time, I still think that being on TV gives you like this next level of legitimacy, right? It's like a it's a stamp for you. Like, man, you really doing your thing if you're on TV. Um, when in reality, I'm sure there are plenty of plenty of YouTube channels that are pulling way more numbers than like those daytime tv talk shows which is crazy to think about but anyway um when i was younger I, there was just this is what i did every single morning from the age i was what 10 to the it's my junior year of high school i would wake up an hour and a half before school i would turn on the tv and there were two different channels that we had on it was either nickelodeon because nickelodeon was fire or it was espn those are the two channels and when i turned and tuned into espn i would sit there i would watch and i would just watch and watch and watch because you got to think about a 10 year old me wanted to be those guys on tv talking about basketball i wanted to have my opinion heard to the hundreds of thousands and at this point maybe millions of people that were watching these shows so i looked up to the people that were on these shows because at the end of the day they were doing what i wanted to do and i did it every single day when i woke up and then when i came home from school when i was doing my math homework espn was on or Spongebob. It was no in between. It was one of the two. And that's just what I did every single day until I was like halfway through high school. And eventually, I just stopped. Those shows didn't interest me anymore. Um, and then I started to take the time to focus on my own stuff, right? I, I wanted to try to make my dream a reality. So that that's there was a period of time where I completely stopped watching. And I haven't really watched since. If I'm strolling through Twitter and I see a one to two minute clip of somebody's show, I'll click on it and see what's up. But for a long time, I didn't watch a single episode of these shows. And for there was a, for a few reasons. A, I wanted to focus on what I was doing. B, I just think it lost me. I just think it lost me. And good on them. They, they had me for seven years or however long it was of every single day. So, shoot, longevity-wise, y'all had a brother. But eventually, it lost me, and I didn't really find it interesting anymore. I started to see the formulas, and the formula started to get boring. You know, that that's what it boiled down to. And then... There's a time when I was younger where, like, who, whatever this guy said on TV, that was my opinion about basketball. You know, I wasn't doing my own research. I was 10 years old. I was 11 years old. So whatever Colin Cowherd has said, that was gospel to me. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually, you know, you get to high school, you start thinking, well, I mean, you're thinking for yourself before that. But you get to high school, you start to do your own research and stuff. And then that opinion of that same host is, doesn't hold as much weight anymore because, oh, I looked this up, bro. That's not really the truth. Or I watched that game exclusively. And in detail. And what he said just really ain't true. So that's what the, the point I really got to in my life. But the past couple of days has been on my mind because I saw a clip on Twitter. And I was like, there's no way this host said that. And there's no way this is the representation of their entire show. There's no way this 30-second clip really showcases the entire show. So after game four of the NBA Finals this year, I, I let out some time to watch all of the major shows on major networks. You know, Fox, ESPN, all of these places that have their their shows. You know the shows I'm talking about um, without me having to say, like, their names. 
I watched all of them for the first time in years, for in its entirety, to see, hey, was 17-year-old me right or wrong about those situations, or have they changed since that time? And the answer of it, I was right, and nothing has really changed. And I think that's a problem. And again, this is open dialogue, so let me know. Uh, this is just my opinion. I do not enjoy those shows. They are not very entertaining to me at all. And, and there's a reason why. Reason one is the formulas that you see. Again, it is very hard to have a, a fun, successful, everyday show. It's hard. It is extremely hard, especially when you're just talking about sports and you're in a studio. So, again, I'm not discrediting people here. But there is a formula that just absolutely drives me crazy. And that's person one on the panel absolutely hates everything. Person two on the panel loves everything, and then they debate. Debates are always good for entertainment, but it has to be it has to be more than I hate this, I love this. Going back to game number four, remember in my post-game interview, not interview, my post-game video, I talked about LeBron James. Um, he had a period of time in the third quarter where he scored or assisted on 12 to 14 straight points for the Lakers. It was a great moment for LeBron because we hadn't really seen him take over a game like that. And though it was in the third quarter and not late in the fourth, like like the, put him on the, the top of the pedestal, put him on the top of the pedestal, uh, 12 to 14 points scoring and assisted on is still incredible. So I was watching one of the shows that we won't mention the name of and, and person A that hates everything went for eight straight minutes of just dogging uh, LeBron. And it's going to suck because everybody's talking about LeBron right now because it's literally the finals, but this is not just about LeBron. D believe that. Uh, person A went eight straight minutes of dogging LeBron, then person B had his eight straight minutes of loving LeBron, and they met each other in the middle, and no matter what, person A just couldn't say a positive thing about LeBron. Person B would say, oh, LeBron ain't missed a free throw in the fourth quarter. So I think that's a real stat. Person B would be like, but, well, he wasn't trailing in the fourth quarter. Person A would be like, well, the score was 83 to 83, and he hit two big free throws. Person B would be like, but he wasn't trailing. Like, there, there's this, there's a, this, okay, again, debates are very, very good for, they're fun. But it has to be, like, logical debates in it. If this man is telling you LeBron ain't missed a free throw when LeBron has notoriously been a below average free throw shooter and he ain't missed one in the fourth quarter, regardless of the situation, that's impressive. Regardless of the situation, that's impressive. And it's funny how things change for person A to do whatever he can to discredit the person that person B loves. You know? And that, that just formula, it just gets played out. The next one that we see all the time is the GOAT debate. Oh my God, if I have to if I have to tune in to another GOAT debate, I'm gonna lose my mind. At the end of the day, this is this is my opinion about the GOAT without even saying any names. At the end of the day, if you think that person A is the GOAT, there is nothing that person B can say to you that will change that. And vice versa. That's just the way it is. Everybody has their own GOAT. So the fact that every day, two times a week, whatever it may be. They're still talking about this GOAT conversation and it's not going anywhere. Is It's tiresome. It's tiresome. And maybe it's something I don't know. They're looking back at the analytics and, oh, snap, we had a 50% spike in viewers when we talk about LeBron versus Jordan, so let's do that every single day. Maybe that's the case. But for me, as a, as a person that just, just curiously want to see what y'all up to, the GOAT debate is played out. It just is, bro. It just it's not fun anymore because there's nothing you can say. When somebody has their mind set on the GOAT as, as a thing that is very opinionated, there's, there's no specific stat that can show you who the greatest basketball player of, of all time is. You can bring stats into it, but there's not like one legitimate stat. So no matter what you say, if you believe that Jordan is the GOAT, nothing LeBron does can make him the GOAT. That's just the way it is. Or vice versa. If you think LeBron is the GOAT, well, at this point, Jordan been retired for a thousand years, so he LeBron will be your goat, and that's cool. It doesn't matter who your goat is. So let's stop the let's stop having a conversation every single day. Let's have it at the end of every season. How about that? Oh, LeBron about to win another championship. Okay, let's bring it back into the, to the conversation. But doing it every single day, or maybe I'm I'm not giving him enough credit. Doing it a, a couple times a week is tiresome. It just really is. It just really is. And then. It's, it's, it's multiple things like that or other shows where it's like a single person, like like this show. Again, this person, uh, Colin Cowherd, he is on air for like 
three hours a day. And maybe it's not that anymore. But back in the day when I was watching, he was on air multiple hours a day just talking about sports. And that's admirable to have people listen to you for that long. But there comes a period of time where, like, some of the takes that are thrown out there are just idiocy. It's just dumb. It's just dumb for the sake of of clicks. And I think that's maybe where the disconnect is between the the consumer, the consumer and the people that are doing it and behind the scenes. At the end of the day, you need very good ratings, right? You need very good ratings. You need people to talk about your show. You need people to talk about you to stay relevant. So saying stuff that you don't necessarily believe to get people talking on Twitter is a real life thing. It is a real life thing. And if that's what it takes to pay the bills, I'm not saying stop doing what you're doing, but there are people out there like me and a lot of people watching this video that see that and be like, bro, you're just talking. They're just talking. They don't believe a single word that they're saying. They just know that if they say it, they might be trending on Twitter, which means that somebody might click that 30 second link and that 30 second link has a 15 second ad attached to it. Then boom, we made some money and boom, we got more people that are maybe willing to listen to our show. And again, now, now, now that I'm done talking about that, I, I'm going to say here, I don't know what the recipe is to make daytime show back to entertaining for me personally. And that's something that I'm having a conversations with with my, my guys because we're, we're in the process of doing something really big. And this is a big portion of it. You know, this is a big portion of it. Is there a way to have a daily show that talks about sports without clickbaiting, without crazy takes, just you talking about it? There's a small market of people that would love to watch the X's and O's, but those those people don't speak for the majority. So maybe you have a segment where you go over X's. I don't I don't know what the recipe is for it to be good again. I'm just saying what they're doing right now just isn't really great. And I would love to hear your comments or, or what you think the next level of sports media should look like, because I personally believe that these shows of the talking heads giving bad takes. Eventually, people, most people are going to catch on and then they might go to obscurity, obscurity. I think that's what might happen. And then it's up to us, the next generation of, of people that are trying to get into media to figure out what the next thing is. What do people want that's not killing your own character? I will not take my word for this, y'all. If I ever get to the point where I have a successful show, I will not get to the point where I'm having outlandish takes for the sake of ratings. I won't do it. I can't do it because y'all that have been here with me from the very beginning know that that's not Kenny and y'all would be able to count. Y'all would be able to see that and talk about it and be like, man, Kenny has changed. I don't want to be that guy and I never will be that guy. Okay. I think that's all I want to say. I think, I don't know. Maybe there's still stuff rumbling, but I'm more curious about the comments of this video more than anything. So be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll be down there reading. Thank you all for watching. Peace.